Hi there, uh, my name is Keith Thomas and this is my vlog number two in the Reflective Vlog series. And uh, just gonna go right into it. Um, as a learner, uh, thus far, I've really learned the, there's a lot of power in being a reflective practitioner. It's something about looking back at your own practice and consciously making uh, decisions and tweaks on your practice, uh, upon your practice, and, and then reflecting again, and then seeing what works, what doesn't work, adjust again, put into practice, <coughs> see what, again, reflect again. And it's what a beautiful way to learn about yourself and and improve upon your practice. It's just a, it's a beautiful way to, to elevate yourself, uh, both on a professional level and a personal level, and, um, <clears throat> and and it's very underrated in my opinion, and I really see the value of this course. Now, um, what I've learned in, in these past weeks is just going through different readings um, in terms of growth of understanding, you know, reflective practice. Um, like in these past weeks' readings, uh, in the Watson and Wilson uh, methods of reflecting practice, um, they show us um, two methods. First method is you know examining narratives of, of our own practice and, and making sense of our experiences. Whereas the second uh, method is you know, encourage uh, practitioners to, to read their convention of practice, examine you know their experiences through different strategies, approaches, and routines. And you know they're both valid points that you can definitely see you know how <clears throat> um, the effectiveness. Of, 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 of both methods and, and, and what we can take from this especially as a class uh, during discussion is that, is that there's no real right or wrong way of reflecting effectively I mean um, there's no one perfect way it all depends about the, the reflective practitioner and how, what works best for them you know, if they feel like they're reflecting a certain way and it's just not, they're not feeling like they're getting a full grasp of, of their, their practice, like something's missing, you know, you should always tweak, tweak that, or your ways of, of, of reflecting and say, you know, maybe, I know I'm going to stop, I'm going to start consulting other people, you know, in the, maybe in the broader lens or maybe um, I'm professional, maybe that can help me, um, <clears throat> you know, like exploring your PLN. And, 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 and then seeing other methods of why isn't this working kind of thing. It's, it's, there are different ways of going about it. And, um, but it's most important to observe ourselves and take in information through different lenses, right? And, and I guess, like I said, people reflect in different ways. If you're a more private person, maybe it's just, you know, you on your journal and just typing and writing in what, you know, what, throughout the day what happened. Whereas some people would rather, um, you know, go talk about it with somebody, <clears throat> you know, go through details and then kind of get feedback along the way. So different ways about going about reflective practice. Now, in terms of, of, of you know, my, my own understanding and my own reflective practice, in, the, in, our, re in our weekly readings, we have this, this wonderful book called Teach, Reflect, Learn, which... Um, which one of the chapters has a reflective self-assessment self tool, which is basically kind of like a, a quiz that you can, you can answer questions, you can see where you stand as a reflective practitioner. And the four stages are unaware, conscious, action, and the ideal refinement stage. And after completing this assessment, I found myself in the action stage, which is not you know, at the refinement stage, but just, just below that, which I felt was a fair assessment because I was like, I, I, I myself, like I said before my last vlog, I'm not a, like, I wasn't always a conscious reflective practitioner, but, but rather like kind of like, like um, subconscious um, in terms of my self-awareness and where I am in my practice. Because sometimes you know when, <clears throat> when things are going wrong, when things aren't right, your lessons aren't going well. And, you know, you're not going to sit there and keep on going at it and hoping that it gets better. No, you, I would like consciously, I would look back and be like, what can I do better? You know, and ask my associate teacher, ask my students, what didn't you like? What did you like? You know, and start making adjustments, right? But was I always doing it? Not necessarily. I just, some days I just took it as a bad day, and maybe that's why it didn't work. But, you know, seeking to make adjustments, you know, post and, and doing something consistently, 
I feel it's fair, it's fair for me to say that, you know, a fair assessment to say I'm in action stage because you're still good, but you know what, there's still a lot to improve. And uh, yeah, so that's my reflective uh, vlog for today. And thank you for listening.